Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how to conduct a literature search in uh, psychology and the social sciences for use in the introduction to a research paper. Um, for example, I have a research paper here that I co-wrote with a dance professor at my school, Utah Valley University. It's kind of a funny one. It's about dance, the academic benefits. But here you see, this is where I'm conducting the literature review. I have a paper here, and I talk about how they conduct it. And that's the sort of stuff that you're going to need to be able to do. Now, the first and best place to start, as far as I'm concerned, is Google. It's perfectly reasonable. You just can't finish there. It's a way of getting a feel for what is available in a particular field. So I'm going to type creativity, and I'm going to type methodology because I want to see how people study it. I want to see the research methods that are available. So I do that, I hit enter, and I get a bunch of hits here, but they look a little broad. So I'm going to come and restrict this thing to research methodology, and that should make things a little more specific. And what's cool here is I come up with a bunch of hits, and they're nice places to start. New methods in creativity research, um, creativity research techniques, uh, Dean Keith Simonton's a major researcher in the area. Oh, look, he's got a book here, Oxford Guide to Creativity Research Methodology. That looks like a straight hit, and so I would want to try to get that from my library or an interlibrary loan. Ecological Approach to Creativity. Objective Test of Creativity. That's great. Overview, Main Analysis, Psychological Research on Creativity. These look like great sources. I wouldn't want to look them, but I would not want to use a Google summary. I'd want to make sure to get an actual copy of the articles. Um, and so, oh, by the way, as long as I'm showing things that tend to freak people out a little bit, um, I thought I'd also show you, just as it's, I think it's okay to use uh, Google to start, I also think it's okay to use Wikipedia. Again, it is certainly not where you would want to stop. It's a place to get a feel for an area, some of the names and some of the terminology. So I would use this one. I just, I would make a point of going through this. Just remember, references to Google and Wikipedia have about zero scholarly value in and of themselves. You're going to have to follow up with the articles that they refer to. And so I'm going to show you how to use a couple of academic databases. I'm going to go to my school here. I teach at Utah Valley University. And I'm going to come down here to the library to search for articles and databases. I want to show you two databases real quick. The first one is annual reviews. These are uh, small books that come out once a year in a bunch of different topics, and they have experts reviewing the literature for the past several years in an area. If you can find an annual reviews article on your topic, you've hit a gold mine because they've basically done your research for you, as long as it's pretty relevant. I'm going to find a review. Because there are not too many articles, you can be pretty broad here. I'm going to type creativity and hit AR search, in or review search. And my top two hits are articles about creativity. One's from 2004, which is pretty recent, but I got another one right here from 2010. Uh, if I want to, I can make the search a little more specific. I can type and methodology. Uh, it came up because I've done the search before. And when I do that, I get the same two articles. So I'm going to look at this one. The nice thing also is recent articles are available as full text. So this looks like a great article. There it is, and if I want to download it, and I'm in Safari, I can just hit that. I've already downloaded it. But it's a fabulous review article, and here's a complete you know, way to do it. And I would want to look at articles and see how they studied creativity. So again, this one might be more of a source for references. Um, but it's a great place to work. Now I'm going to show you another one that I could use. I'm going to back up a little bit here to where I was before, if I can get there. Uh, to the complete list of databases. The one that I use most frequently is something called Psych Info. That's the major database in uh, psychology. It has peer-reviewed articles. It goes back to the 1800s. Uh, there's a lot of full text, but not all. This one right above it, Psych Articles, is a subset, and it's all very high-quality journals published by psychological associations, and it's all full text. If you're getting too many hits, that's a great place to go to narrow things down to you know, ones that would work really well. But I want to start with Psych Info here. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to come up in an EBSCO host window, if it ever loads. There we go. And I'm going to type in what I am looking for. I am looking for creativity research and research methods. And I've already looked for some of this. So 
here it comes up. The thing you need to know is that unlike Google, you can use wildcard characters and specific combinatorial searches or Boolean searches. You see how I have a little asterisk here after creative? I go to the V, then I have an asterisk. That's because it will get creative with an E or creativity with an I. And then I tell it I also want things that have the terms research methodology. Now, I have an asterisk here so I can get methodology or methodologies with an I or methodological. It'll get several different terms. So if I want to see research methodology on creative or creativity, this is probably a good way to start. I hit search. Uh, it takes a moment. Now, sometimes if you do a search on something like depression, you'll get 100,000 hits. I only have 132 hits right here. But uh, let's take a look at what they are. Participatory research, what tech savvy use, strengths-based organization. You know, these look a little too broad. I'm going to show you a nice way to narrow things down. One thing is I can come right here and I can put TI, which means this term has to appear in the title of the article. I'm still going to leave research methodology out, but I put TI for title and I put the creative thing in parentheses. So this has to appear in the title, but this can appear anywhere. By the way, by putting these two next to each other, it tells it they need to be close to each other. If I want them exactly right next to each other, I put them in parentheses. Anyhow, hit search, and I'm going to go from 132 hits down to a smaller number. All right, only 24. It's a small number, but it did work. Uh, pursuing and flourishing through creative methodologies. That has to do not so much with creativity, research on creativity, but novel ways of exploring other things. Here we go. Assessing creativity with divergent thinking tasks, a new subjective scoring method. That looks great. Um, if I hold my cursor over this thing, it gives me at least part of the um, abstract right there. Central study of individual difference, traditional scoring systems, well-known problems. And this one looks great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Add to Folder. And I'm going to try to close that window. And you see over here now, I have this thing, Folder Has Items. And it's got that one article. Let me see what else is good. Assessment, uh, blah, 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 blah. identity and creativity, lived experience and creativity. Uh, social psychology, creativity, and innovation. Let's see what that one's about. Taiwan's benchmarking. Blah, 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 blah. No, it doesn't look good. Using a creative writing practice in qualitative research. Yeah, why not? I'll just stick that one in the folder right away. And I will... Poetry and photography. Why not? I'll add it. Uh, so anyhow, I've got a few items in the folder. I can go through a whole bunch more articles. I'm mostly picking them on the title. And I can come over here to Folder View. And when that opens, it'll bring up these three articles that I've looked at. And I can click on their titles and get a more, comp I can get the complete, uh, I can get the complete uh, abstract. So I'm going to click on that one. And I'm going to wait a second, and it comes up. That's great. So I can look at this one. I can read the complete abstract. And let's say I decide I want this one. Now, there's something that's kind of helpful to have. And I think is, does it do this? Cite this article. It's kind of convenient. Look, this is APA style, and it includes the DOI dot digital object identifier number that you're supposed to have these days. You can just copy that and paste it. It's a great thing. Now let's say I found the articles I want and now I'm ready and I want to get them to me. The easiest way to do this to get the PDFs is when this comes back up, if it ever does, is watch this. I can select all and I can email them to myself. And what it will do is it will send me one email for the PDF of each article with an APA style reference. Here, I got to just uh, type in my email address. There it is. And a creativity methodology. Oops. And remove them so when you're done, so they don't come up again. Okay, fine. It's misspelled. I don't care. And what I'm going to do now 
is I'm going to tell it to send them as PDFs, and look, if I come right here, citation format, and say APA, it'll send them to me in that format, and that's a great thing. Then I hit send right here, and in a few minutes, I'll have uh, several, several emails, one for each article, plus one that has the APA references to all of them. It's a great way to do things. Anyhow, that's a nice place to start, and I hope that helps. Thank you.